What's up, YouTube? We are back with another awesome auto vlog. In the last vlog, we went ahead and installed this Lost Fit 40 inch light bar. I really want to upgrade and add more lights to the GX in the future, but I'm really not a fan of having a bunch of those little switches with that wiring harness I used in the last video. So I thought it'd be really great to upgrade and do a switch controller. Now, I will say I went with the Oxbeam switch controller just because. I think I've mentioned before, the GX for me is kind of a budget build. I'm not trying to do top of line everything on it, and I especially don't want to buy a $600 Switch controller. So if any of you are interested in a Switch controller, I can maybe help uh, convince you maybe the Switch Pros one is that much better. Uh, maybe this is garbage. I will say that just initially, when I open this box up, it has a uh, very nice packaging. So uh, the cool thing is, is with all these Switch controllers, they, they come with these little sticker packets. So these stickers make it nice. You can customize your switch controller for exactly what you're trying to control and gives you a nice customized feel. The nice thing is it comes with a couple of all black stickers so you can go ahead and black out some of the buttons that you're not currently using. So this is the main part of the switch controller that you're actually going to see in your vehicle. So we'll mount this in the dash area. I want to mount this actually to where a previous owner to this vehicle put a XM satellite radio where the ashtray used to be. I'm going to see if I can modify that area and fit this in right where the ashtray was. I think that would be a nice clean fit location. It's about the exact dimensions of the XM controller. So I think that will fit there nice. My first impressions of this are the nice thing. It's a metal housing which makes it feel very solid. Much better construction than I was expecting. The buttons have a nice click to them. They don't feel cheap. They feel like a quality button. Uh, and that for me, like a feel like that is very important on whether or not I like a product. So the fact that it just feels like it's, you know, not cheap. I like that. Another thing that we have here in the box is a 60 amp breaker. So whenever you exceed the 60 amps that this is rated for, you'll blow this breaker and you can mechanically reset it so you're not blowing fuses. Uh, you're just more or less uh, having to switch this breaker when things trip. So what I think I'll do is see if I can find a nice place to mount this. Uh, it might mount up on top of the battery, uh, but it also might mount to this fuse box. And that comes to another thing that I will mention about this. Uh, the Oxbeam controller comes with this nice fuse box. And this is where you're going to tie in all of your main LEDs or whatever you're controlling. This is going to get mounted up under the hood. And this has a nice terminal block on it and a fuse for each terminal block. Uh, there's some terminals here for the main uh, controller to plug into with an extension wire that I'll plug in here. Uh, there's some terminals here which are going to go straight to the battery. So I'll run these from the battery to the breaker and then over to this control box. And we'll mount this control box up under the hood. This comes with two different mounting brackets. This one is kind of a a hinge style mounting bracket. Uh, so this is the one I think that I can modify the ashtray area to hold. And so this will mount kind of up like this. And that gives you a little bit of flexibility on where you mount that and the angle at which it's positioned. The other option you have for mounting is you can mount to this bar and then you can connect that up to the back of the switch. And that's kind of a more static position. You can mount that somewhere flat. And the last thing that this comes with is it comes with some mounting brackets. So this bracket is for mounting the control box into the engine bay area. So this will give the control box a nice clean place to sit under the hood. And it'll also give us a nice place to cleanly route our wires to the box. All right, so let's get this install started. We got all the parts we need. Let's just go straight to the interior and see if we can take out that old XM satellite module and replace it with this aux beam controller. Hopefully the lighting is good enough for you to see. This is the XM radio module that I talked about. So the previous owner had this added in and it's kind of a nice location. I think what's cool about it is the aux beam controller looks to be about the same size and it should just kind of go right in that place. But I want to take this apart and see what's back there for mounting because uh, this is the bracket and there's a couple of, there's some slots and then also some uh, holes. I want to see which one of these will mount up correctly to the bracket that's back there. All right, so the more I started looking at this, I'm actually gonna take off, take apart this bracket here. So you can take off the side bracket. That gives you the ability to just work with the back plate so that you're not getting in the way of mounting of the actual controller itself. So one of the things that was cool about this, I found out if I just go 
straight in here, there's actually enough area and I could actually mount it up right there to the front of this. And I think that'll be actually a better solution. So I'm just going to go ahead and use these plastic screws over again from the XM unit. Uh, you can use any kind of plastic threadable screw. Uh, these are metal screws themselves. Alrighty, so I rearranged the camera here so you can hopefully see this a little bit better. Uh, but I have this one screw in here and I'm going to go finish putting in the second screw and having it tap into the plastic here. I'm just going to push in and get it started and then it threads in from there. And these actually have quite a nice uh, bite to them. So on the back side here, we've got a few holes here for the different mounting brackets. And this lines up to the outer four, like so. And there are little flat Phillips head screws that just go into each one of these four holes. I'm going to add those real quick. All right, so we got the screws on the back here. Next thing to do is take these Allen uh, bolts and mount the panel back up here. All right, so I'm a huge fan of the way that looks. It is a nice, sturdy location. I just love the way that is. It's very simple. Uh, you can all do this at home without having to make any custom brackets. It's just kind of in a nice spot for driving. Just reach down and hit the buttons and they're just right there. So this pretty much does it for all we need to do in the interior of the vehicle. We need to route the extension cable that connects to this through the firewall, but everything else from here will be under the hood. So let's go up under the hood and we'll finish the install there. Actually, before I go ahead and start cluttering up this area by mounting the switch assembly here, I want to go ahead and run the control cable to the interior of the vehicle through this firewall grommet. If you can see right here, there's a rubber grommet and you can pull that out. So we're going to feed this wiring harness through the firewall just the way we did in the last video for the other wiring harness, which will be through this rubber grommet and we'll pull that through into the interior. All right, so now with that wiring harness fed through the firewall, we got it tucked in real nice and we have this connector available to plug into the switch assembly. <clears throat> the next thing we want to do is we want to mount up this switch assembly. I'm not sure how well you can see here, but there's a bracket here and then there is another uh, bolt that's right here. I got this bolt undone and I'm going to go through this top hole here. Okay, so let's go back to where it was at here. Alright, so I'm going to put a washer on here and go through the top, line that up. This actually is a really good mounting spot, doesn't require any modifications or drilling, so I think this is a great solution. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is mount this switch assembly to the top of this bracket. So if you watched the video of installing the grill and setting up those Raptor lights, you remember that we used a fuse tap in that video. Uh, so we're going to use one again. Thanks to some of you in the comments from that video, I found out I could have bypassed all the complexity of that by just hooking things up to the uh, heat fuse for the heated seats. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that. So this fuse tap and this harness were provided by Oxbeam in the kit. So this fuse tap is actually going to crimp on to this uh, harness that they gave and it is a two pin connector so really you just want to take this and it'll hook in here to this two pin connector and then you can kind of route that out the side here so you can take this fuse puller pull that 20 amp fuse and then put it in the spot here alongside of the 5 amp fuse that they provide in the harness already connected up and then what you do is just connect this back in a nice thing here is that this will be powered up whenever the vehicle is powered and you can run that out of the fuse box like so. Alright, so we're getting down to the last few things. Uh, the next big thing we got to do is we got to take this breaker and we're going to mount this breaker. I'm actually going to use the supplied screws that are with the unit and I'm going to screw it into the top of the fuse box here. I think that'll be a, a clean place to mount it. So I went ahead and stripped back 
this old harness that I had, I cut it kind of uh, conservatively so that I can actually reuse that harness if I ever want to for something. Uh, but here I just have a short little piece that comes from this DT connector up above and that's going to run down in and we're just going to hook this up to position one. This will be switch one and position one is going to be the 30 amp fuse so that's rated for up to 30 amps. So we're going to hook up the light bar there and we'll try it out and make sure it works. Alright, so we are hooked into channel 1, the 30 amp fuse, and the last connection we have to make is the one that came through the firewall, and then this will just connect up to here like so. Alrighty, and then the last thing after that, should be able to just put our cover on here. So now with the cover in place, it's a super clean setup. And you can see we have just a bit of clearance uh, from the hood hitting the box. So that is the perfect setup for this. No hole drilling required. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and put a sticker uh, for a light bar on the switch position one. And let's test it out. All right. So of the variety of options here, there are uh, just two for the light bar. We'll go with this light bar sticker and put that in switch position one on the unit. All right, so the camera's not doing it justice because it's auto-focusing, kind of the way it does with the light bar when I turn it on, but this is illuminating a nice blue color. The one thing I do want to do is I want to take the blank uh, button covers and cover up these other ones that aren't being used, uh, just so that the light isn't illuminating out from those positions. But the light bar switch itself looks good. The real thing is, is the test to see whether or not it actually turns on the uh, light bar, so let's check that out. Whew. There we go. So light bar is on and as you can see the red LED up here That turns on that is so bright. I still can't get over that light bar and how bright it is. It's ridiculous So now from a driving perspective, uh, we got a nice uh, way to turn on and off the light bar and now we can start adding uh, more lights to the GX and get ourselves a pretty custom lighting setup going on so I'm pretty excited about that Alright, so like all my videos, I try to give about a week of use of whatever product I'm installing before I do this final clip right here. I will say that after a week of using this Oxbeam controller, I haven't had any issues and I'm really a big fan of the way it looks. The fact that it fits perfectly where the OEM ashtray used to sit, it looks great and it has like a really seamless look to it. I'm a huge fan of the way that looks. The great thing about the kit is you don't have to mount it there like I did. You can mount it pretty much anywhere in your car. I see some people mount them on top of the dash. Uh, some people off to the side of the steering wheel here. So really, it gives you the freedom to mount it wherever you want. Overall, the install was very easy. There's only a few connections to be made, and everything fit really well. If I had to pick one negative thing to say about the product, I think that I would say that I'm not a big fan of the fact that the positive and negative terminals inside of the control box are so close together. I think it's kind of a bad design. I think it poses risk of shorting things out. Even with that, I still highly recommend the Switch controller. I still think overall it's a little crazy to be spending $170-ish on something that's just generally a fancy Switch. So in summary, I think the Oxbeam controller is a great option for controlling your lighting accessories. If you notice, I put two other stickers on there that are not the light bar, and that's a little bit of a hint on the LED accessories I plan on expanding to in the near future. Alright, so I'm going to end things here. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button to let me know if you like the video. If you're new to the channel, I do regular GX470 videos, and if you're interested in that content, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload new videos. I have a lot in store for the upcoming videos, and I can't wait to share it with you. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.